Hello and welcome everybody to another Dusk Morn Draft. I'm Paul Chion and we are still grinding away these early access event drafts. Shout out to Wizards of the Coast for allowing me to participate and do battle early and learn all about the Dusk Morn format and share that experience with all of you. We've done a few drafts and a sealed so far. We have explored the Rakdos Sacrifice strategy and along with the Blue Green and Manifest deck. So excited to try all the different archetypes in this upcoming draft. Now, before this draft fires, I did want to say that if you've been enjoying this channel, I do have a Patreon channel. So check out my Patreon channel. That's patreon.com slash paulchion. I do think it's a really, really great way to up your limited game because you will get access to my Discord channel where you get to join a bunch of like-minded individuals looking to improve their limited game along with you. Additionally, this video is brought to you by tcgplayer.com. Check out tcgplayer.com for all your TCG singles and sealed product needs. If you want to purchase any product, or singles for your upcoming Friday Night Magic or to have some home drafts, make sure you check them out. Make sure you click that affiliate link in the description below if you did want to make some purchases. Last but not least, check out heavyplay.com slash paulchion for 10% off your first order for all things Magic the Gathering supplies and accessories, deck boxes, play mats, sleeves, dice boxes, life pads, all kinds of great stuff. Make sure you check them out. All right, sick, sick, Mythic rare. We're due. Alrighty. Draft time. Is that a myth? No. That's just a bad tutor. But what about this one? Twitching doll. One in a green for a 2-2. Tap, add one man of any color. Put a nest counter on twitching doll. Tap, sacrifice twitching doll. Create a 2-2 green spider creature token with reach for each doll counter on twitching doll. Okay. So it's a mana creature, and then at some point you can just blow it up for like a bunch of tutus with reach. Okay, I'm in for that. Absolutely. Okay, we'll play that. Let's see, Duskmorn's Domination. Yeah, this was the very, very bad mind control. I think the card's still fine, but I'm, I don't think it's better than Twitching Doll. This is like a really weird edict. I still don't know what to make of it. Irreverent Gremlin's probably great. Two mana, two, two menace. Whenever a small creature enters, you can rummage. Okay, 2 mana, 2-2 two, two mana, small creature rummage is good. Meat locker, sure. Glassworks is fine. Th these are all kind of run of the mill. You know, I will notice so a lot of the commons just kind of seem meh. But I will sm slam this Twitching Doll. And now we have, ooh, what is this? Overgrown Zealot, 2 mana, 4 tap to add any mana, 1 mana of any color. Tap, add 2 mana of any one color. Spend this mana only to turn permanence face up. So really good in blue-green, I guess. There's Fear of the Abduction, which is a 6-mana 5-5 five, five flyer. I do have to exile a thing that I control, but if I do, I get to exile a thing that they control. So that's a big cost, right? And the thing is, if this card dies, they get their card back. Put each card exiled with it into... Oh no, I get my creature back as well. Okay, that's not as bad. Commons, once again, are quite weak, so I don't really care about any of them. The Fear of Infinity is also quite cool. But after first picking Twitching Doll, I don't know if I want to take a blue-black card. So I think it's between Fear of Abduction and Overgrown Zealot. And this is just a mana creature. So I don't even really know what Green-White's trying to do, but I'll take Fear of Abduction. We'll, we'll, we'll see how this works. Like, it's a lot, like a six drop in this economy, in this day and age, it's so much. You know what I mean? It's so much. All right, Grand Entryway. This is a common. You make a 1-1 one, one for two. And then I get to, so it's like five mana for like three power and three toughness worth of stats. Not particularly good. Uh, I do like Glassworks Shattered Yard, but after these two picks, I don't know if that's what I want to take. Sporogenic Infection is okay. Rootwise Savior, five mana, three, four, Haste, Survival. At the beginning of your second main phase, if Rootwise survival, Survivor is tapped, put three counters on up to one target land you control. Do I, is this card even good? 5 mana, 3, 4 haste is such a bad body. I'm going to just take the long neck. I just think this card's good. And so I'm going to take it. I, like, I just... This just does a lot. It looks like the maybe the green-white survivor deck is open, but this just helps you hit Delirium. It blocks. It's just a solid 3 mana creature. Here, I think I'm going to take House Cartographer, have a nice little 2-drop here. I haven't drafted the green-white survivor deck, so I got to figure out what it's trying to do. A couple of Megalodons... Uh, Manifest Dread is okay, but I think the Cartographer is better. 
but I need to like give it evasion or something. What does this do? Gets me lifelink and this is just a random plane cycler. All right, let's take the cartographer and see if it does something. I need to pick up like a baseball bat or other ways to tap my creatures or give evasion. Okay, moving on to this pack. That's a pyroclasm, which I don't care much about. Don't really care about these red cards. Underwater tunnel is not very good. I don't think root white survivor is good. So I don't know that I want to take it. There's the fear of abduction, but I haven't seen a whole lot of white afterwards. Yeah, th th here's actually, this is actually interesting. Which one's better? Wary Watchdog or Flesh Burrower? I'm going to take the Wary Watchdog just because I like the double surveil on it. And I like that it just helps you get to Delirium. But I like the Flesh Burrower as well. But three power usually trades with a lot of stuff as well. Trying to figure out what my second color needs to be. I haven't really been seeing a whole lot of great white cards here. Now we do have a Fanatic of the Harrowing, which is not bad. There's also Cursed Windbreaker. I don't like this very much. There's also Grasping Longneck, so I can just keep taking green cards here and just try to figure out what my second color needs to be, and I think that's going to be my approach. I think, unless the Fanatic is super good, I don't think it's super good. So I'll just keep taking the green cards. All right, what do we have here? Cult Healer, I don't care so much about. Possessed Goat is fine. There's a Meat Locker, which is surprisingly good. Which is, it actually buys you a lot of time. And then you get to draw some cards later. So if you have a lot of mana in your deck, it's not bad. And I actually think I'm going to take it because I just don't really like the Goat very much. Fear of the Dark. If depending player controls no, it gains Medicine Death Touch. That doesn't seem that great. I'm going to just take the Meat Locker in case that's where we need to be, but uh, not really clear what my second color is supposed to be. I just, these packs are just super duper weak. Fear of Lost Teeth, I like in Black Red Sacrifice, but I don't know if I like it so much in Black Green. Haven't seen enough red or green cards for me to think that this is what I want either. Do I take Cautious Survivor? Which is just a four mana four four, or do I take etched? I'm gonna take the cornfield in case we end up in green white. It's just like a nice dual land. I just think a four mana four four is just not very good. It's just below the bar of what I like. So it's like replacement level, and if it ends up in my deck, so be it. Here I will take a branch snapper. I don't mind this at the top end of my curve. That's a late impossible inferno as well. There's a blue green land there as well. But this is not looking particularly strong right now. Uh, I mean, haven't seen great cards in any color, really. We've had some green things. There was the four mana black tutu. That was it. We saw a meat lot. Yeah, I don't know. This is kind of tricky. Here we have cult healer, which is whatever. Three mana for a three, three. Sometimes it gets lifelink. Attack in the box. What does this do? Three mana, two, four. When it attacks, you may have it get plus four, plus oh. If I do sacrifice it, no. There's a fear in the dark. I'll just take this red, white land, whatever. All right, that's another meat locker. Okay, I'm just going to take this meat. I, I wanted to try to draft different things, but I don't know. Shepherding spirits I like. I like that more than cautious survivor. And I'm going to take that over Bleeding Woods. We saw like no red, not a whole lot of red cards. So, yeah, maybe we're green right. I don't know. But I'll just stay open. Like if I open just like a random bomb in another color, I'll just take it. So Undead Sprinter was an MVP for us in the last draft. Not going to take it here. What does Nowhere to Run do? Two mana flash, ETB, target creature gets minus three, minus. Yeah, okay, that's good. Just two mana, target creature gets minus three, minus three. Fanatic of the Harrowing, Scorching Dragonfire are all fine. There's a split. What does the Bottomless Pool do? This is a bounce effect, plus also I, uh, all my stuff become Ophidians. There's a split skin doll. When it enters, draw a card. Then discard a card unless you control another creature with power two or less. That seems okay. So do I want to go blue green or green white? Split skin doll also seems okay. All right, I'll, I'll, I'll take Split Skin Doll for the sake of taking a card in another color be just because we've drafted the blue-green deck already. So I'm going to do... I don't even know if it's right, but I'm just going to do this just so that we have... 
Different play experiences. Flood Pits Drowner is great. Two mana, two one. Uh, flash, you get to basically stun something and then you can sack this to eat something, which is nice. Exercise is okay. It just lets you kill something big. We are lacking interaction, so I might want to just take this just because I have no removal. Flood Pits Drowner would also be very good, obviously, but we took the Split Skin Doll. So let's just take the exercise here. There is Rite of the Moth, some reanimation effects. What does Funeral Room do? Whenever a creature you control dies, each opponent loses one life and you gain one life. That'd be nice in black red. When you unlock this door, return all creature cards from your graveyard to the battlefield. Okay, that's exciting. What does Greenhouse Ricky... Do? Please be good. Land your control, have tap, add about one man of any color. When you unlock this, mill four cards, then return up to two permanent cards from among them to your hand. So four mana to get two things back, but you mill four? That seems pretty reasonable. It's also a mana fixer, but you don't really want to play this on turn three. But it's just like four mana get two things back. I think it's better than Moldering Jim. So yeah, let's try this for El Cienso. It's just a four mana card that gives me Delirium and gets two things back. There's another one! Did we take another one? <laughs> I mean, all these cards kind of stink. Disturbing Mirth is cool. Bashful Beasties, whatever. All right, I'll 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 take another one. Let, let's draft like a, a green-white grind people out deck. What is this card? Four black? That's a lot of black mana. Each player sacks X creatures. Whenever cre creature you control dies, you may pay three life. If you do, return that card. Under your control with a finality counter, pay three life. Whenever a creature an opponent controls die, dies, they may pay three life. If they don't, return that card under your control. I mean, it costs way too much mana. Uh, wow, what do I take? These packs are just so bad. Say its name, I guess? This is a lot of self-mill, I will say. We're doing some green-white self-mill stuff. Popular Egotist and Fear of Burning Alive is pretty nice. Uh, this is a 4-mana four 4-3. Four, this is a 4-mana four 4-3 four, and then you can move it around? That doesn't seem that bad to me. Yeah, That honestly does not seem that bad to me. Man, white is getting really cut off. But I'm going to try this machete. Right? It's a 4-mana manifest dread attach. 4-3. Yeah, 4-mana four 4-3 four, and then you can move it around the late game. Yeah, that's that seems fine. Uh, I do really need interaction. Do I have good mana fixing is a question. I have a Twitching Doll. I feel like I might want... I don't really care about Moldering Gym. I feel like I'm, I want to splash this Drag to the Roots. So I will do that. With Delirium, it costs two mana. All right. Uh, now there's a, another Grasping Long Neck. But now that I took Drag to the Roots... I think I will take this Neglected Manor to help cast it. Here we have a Spectral Snatcher. I don't think I'm going to play it here, though, because it's double black to cast. Fan Maybe we're just like straight Abzan. I don't know. Like I like Fnatic, so we'll see. I mean, maybe there's this, like a crazy weird world where I just end up playing black green. I, I don't know how likely that is, but... White certainly got super cut off here in the uh, in this pack. We got a split skin doll, and that's it. And an exercise. Like the black cards we got were bad, arguably better. I mean, with double greenhouse, maybe we just play all the colors. Who knows? Well, another fanatic of the. I like this card a lot. Okay, don't don't like that card a lot. Marvin Murderous Mimic. Two mana, two, two. Has all activated abilities or creatures you control that don't have the same name as this creature. How many activated abilities do I have? Not a whole lot. Okay. So we're looking to be green-white. I don't really care about those. There's a Flood Pitch Drowner. What is Fear of Surveillance to? Two mana, two, two. Okay, it's just a two mana, two, two. There's a Seized from Slumber, which is a removal spell, or a Shrewd Storyteller. Uh, at the beginning of your second main phase, if Shrewd Storyteller is tapped, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature. I guess I'm just going to take this just because I need a three drop. 
All right, I feel like I'm probably going to take this rare. I can put a permanent... So, like, it's really good with these six drops. I will try this Kona. All right, we're back on the uh, survi survival wagon, I guess. Oh, Orphans of the Wheat is really nice with these survival cards. Yeah, but I don't know. Kona seems awesome. All right, so with Kona, I kind of want combat tricks. We'll see where this goes. Uh, what does this do? When you unlock this door, ret door return target creature with Mana Valley 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. 4 mana, whenever you attack, put a plus 1, plus 1 counter on target attacking creature. That seems pretty good. Another Fnatic. Jump scare is okay. This is f a fine top end card, but we have like 3, 6 mana things. I want to try Surgical Suite. I feel like it's a nice way to just like pump my creatures every turn. And then additionally, I have some number of two, uh, twos and threes to get back with some self mill. So I want to try this. Don't want greenhouse gazebo number three. Oh, certainly want monstrous emergence. Manifest dread is fine, but monstrous emergence is probably green's best common. So I'm going to take that here. And now we have this pack, which has uh, seas from slumber. What is our what are our spells? Oh, here it is. Cryptid Inspector. No, I don't have any face down cards. So it's basically Seize from Slumber or Jump Scare. I guess I'll take Seize from Slumber just because I'm kind of lacking interaction. What does this card do? Please be good. Creature spells you control have convoke. Untap each creature you control during each other player's untap step. Uh, that's card disadvantage. I don't want that. I'll take Manifest Dread. As another two mana card. What does this do? Oh, not very good. There's the survivor or the fear of immobility. I'm going to take the immobility card. I, I do like this card. Just kind of lock something down, which I like. I can also technically tap my own creature if I want to get some, some nice value there. Uh, certainly going to slam coordinated clobbering here. All right, maybe we don't have to splash this black. Feels like we have enough just within the two colors here. And we picked up uh, Seize from Slumber, Monstrous Emergence, Clobbering, and Exercise as removal effects. So I think that's probably enough. Although now that we picked up a Moldering Gym, uh, unless I want to take Bear Trap. Eh, Bear Trap doesn't seem very good. There's also a Haunted Screen. Do I want this? Uh, I don't know. Wow, there's the mind the the mind control. But far too late for that. Found footage? Is this card playable? I don't know. Okay, jump scare. I'll play it. All right. Let's just keep it two colors and not do anything too crazy here. I'm here to show... Look, we're not looking to go super deep brewy just yet. So let's just kind of keep it solid here. And this looks like our deck. Four twos, I guess five twos. We have some tricks, some interaction. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Oh, we can probably cut one land because we have two land cyclers. So I think I'm just going to cut a planes and try to find room for one more card. Again, this I'm not really ever playing on turn four. Or on turn three. So I'm just really playing this as a really slow way to get something back. So let's try to find one more card to play. There's Haunted Screen. There's Drag to the Roots. Yeah, I, I don't know what to play. Is it worth it to play this Drag to the Roots? I have a White Black Land, a Twitching Doll, I could potentially play this Haunted Screen. Or I can just play Found Footage and just try this, like Surveil 2 Draw Card. Yeah, I'm not going to get too fancy. Let's just play a Found Footage and call it a day. Boom. Time to battle. Yeah, I'm not in love with this deck. I don't... I also just... I, I'm not in love with... I don't know. The green-white archetype doesn't seem particularly good to me. But 
I probably haven't cracked the code yet. Just looking at the cards, though. We need, like, a, a Springleaf Drum or something. I'd love to have a play next turn. I don't have a play next turn. I'm going to take the land. I am very far away from casting Fear of Abduction. Maybe I should have taken the Overgrown Zealot. I don't know. Uh, I, I, I mean, I have nothing else to play. Do I just play this? No, it just seems so bad. It just doesn't do anything. It just leaves it vulnerable to like some enchantment kill card. The question is whether or not I should fetch a planes. I think the answer is yes, because then I can cast the rickety gazebo and get back the fear of abduction of abduction plus shepherding spirits. Next turn I can go. And I feel like I should have taken a moldering gym. I should have taken it over that stupid haunting screen or whatever. I think I probably would have just played it, to be honest. Our opponent's going super deep, by the way. Props to MTG Monster. All right, we got the Machete. We have Fear of Immobility next turn as well. So we're about to start hitting pretty hard. What? Come on, this is just, this is, this is ridiculous. My black red deck would have destroyed this deck. Her, 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 her. All right. Manifest red. Okay, sure. Okay, we'll do this, and I don't really want that card at this point. All right, they have three cards in hand. What do you have? They could play a 5-5 Manifest creature. They can certainly do that. Pyroclasm? That could not have been... That could not be good. They must have a way to deal damage to my Storyteller? That deals damage to me, not my creature. What just happened? I, I, I do not know what happened. I have this coordinated clobbering. Does this get back any permanent? Okay, so getting back a land is also not terrible. Well, we'll see. I mean, this card is very slow. Okay, Storyteller down. Okay. Another removal spell? Holy cow! They are doing it. So what can I get back? I feel like I really want to land. So let's get back. Ooh, split skin doll. Does that do anything? Oh, two cards from among them. Never mind. This card is this card is way worse than I thought. <laughs> this card is way worse than I thought. Wow. See? This is why you play. 
This is why you play. Holy cow, that's bad. Holy cow, that is bad. I didn't even know what to discard. Is it this? Or is it the clobbering? I'll discard the clobbering. I think the surgical suite's gonna be good. Return CMC three or less. So getting back Shooter Storyteller seems pretty decent. What the hell is this card? <laughs> nice. All right, so what can I get back? The Shrewd Storyteller. Yeah, it's gotta be the Shrewd Storyteller. Wow, this thing is gonna get me. That's nuts. Should I have used exercise? I don't even, I don't even know. I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. All right, so I go to three and then one. I... Ah, I guess I'm dead. I guess I'm dead. <laughs> Grievous wounds plus... Okay, whatever. What, you know what? It's the pre-release. It's the early access event. Live your wildest dreams. I would be shocked if that is a thing, but I just think we have a pretty poor green-white deck. Like, I like what the black-red deck was trying to do. I just... I have no idea what this deck is even trying to do. Actually, you know what I should have done? I should have just gone straight Abzan, given that that card is just much worse than I thought it was. So yeah. I'm just gonna draft. I'm gonna switch my deck over to just like a really cool Abzani deck or whatever. All right, so we have a bunch of forests here. I can use the Branch Snapper to get another forest and then I can just play Greenhouse which then opens up the white cards. I wonder if it's better just to play grasp, Grasping Longneck. Actually, no, I'm gonna just play the found footage, actually. Do some surveil nonsense. Just naturally finding a plane seems way better. Brood Spinner is great. I do want to draft a nice little black green mid-range deck, but it does feel like there's a lot of good mana fixing in this set, so I think that does open the door for people to try to go super deep. Like Saltai, Saltai has always been kind of a naturally good combination. All right, we definitely want planes. I don't think I want Cornfield though. Actually, I can take Cornfield. I can take both of these. Sure.
And then this can trade with whatever. And then next turn, we have Fear of Immobility that we can play or just Rickety Gazebo. I thought this was like a, like a Hazel's Nocturne type effect. Okay, I am happy with that trade. Cynical Loner. Twitching Doll is interesting. But I'm just going to play this. Have a nice little 4-4 in play. Like, I kind of want to use have them use their removal spell on this so that the Twitching Doll can kind of go off. Final vent. Okay, that's fine. All right, got exiled, sure. All right, rickety, rickety gazebo. Did we hit some stuff? Oh, we got another gazebo. Did, did we get the other gazebo? It's slow card advantage. All right, we'll take this. All right, we can start uh, putting counters on this or whatever. Let's play another rickety gazebo. All right, what do we get this time? Oh, hey. Hey, look, we, we're getting things. Look at that. All right, I'll pass. I'll take two from the Burrower if they choose to attack me. That's an odd splash, Wild, Wildfire Wicker Folk. Huh. So they both have... How big this? It gets, it becomes a big trampler. What do I, what can I get back from the graveyard? Um, I guess this twitching doll just doesn't seem that great here. All right. Uh, I guess we'll get the twitching doll back. All right, Kona into Fear of Abduction seems pretty cool. Yeah, Exercise is quite good. All right, Spine Seeker Centipede is whatever. Don't kill it. House Cartographer. This is an artifact creature. Hmm. 
No. I don't want them to chump. Okay, well, this is kind of awkward. Like, do I put this into play? I don't think so. I'm just gonna... Just gonna do some stuff. All right, that's a machete. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 damage. Do this. All right, well, they had nothing. Okay. We got one. The question here becomes how, how dirtily do we want our deck to be? And by that, I mean, do I just play the black cards and just go for power? This, this. Unclear that I want to play this one, but like those two. Something like that. We can cut a planes. Uh, I think jump scare doesn't seem particularly good. We can cut found footage. Something like that. I think if I did this, I also want to play this card. So that would mean I'd have to cut two cards out of everything that we have here. I think I can cut, say its name. I don't even have any delirium cards. Like I'm just playing these cards just as a way to curve out. This gives me card advantage and also helps me fix my black mana. And then I can cut one more card, I guess. 14, 16 lands. Do I play 15 lands? Is 15 lands absolute insanity? 15 lands with two land cyclers and a twitching doll and a haunted screen. Actually, it's it's really not clear that this made my deck better. I just I, I don't I don't think these cards are even remotely good enough for me to like try to get crazy like this. So let's just go back to what we had before. Oh well. So let's play this. Yeah. It's not a big enough difference in my opinion. All right, back to the drawing board. All right, one and one. Opponent on the play. I get to go turn two. I get to go turn two cartographer, turn three split skin doll. Do, are all the survival cards just terrible? I just don't. I don't, I don't get them. I don't get it. I just don't get it. Like, I'm going to play this, and I guess now they can't attack me? Is that is that how this works? This could probably be a common. Okay. So, blue, blue, green... Feels like it could be some kind of a counter spell. I don't know. Whatever. If it is, it is. You know what I mean? Getting Twitching Doll going seems quite good. This allows us, if they play a big creature this turn, I can go Fear of Immobility, which is pretty good. And I do believe that's what I'm going to do. I, I, like, I just kind of want to clear the board here. But yeah, it's like, this is just a grizzly bear. I don't know. I'm pretty low on the survival stuff. I, I hope to be proven wrong, though. I'm just... 
So my bear needs to attack and survive combat. That's what you're saying. Or I can like tap my tutu. I guess. I'll keep that on top. Let's play the storyteller. At what point am I supposed to explode my twitching doll? Just curious. This key bearer, by the way, is really good. I might need to uh, fear of abduction this. Draw three, discard. Like, that's the thing. If you can... This might be one of the better common uh, uh, rooms, actually, surprisingly. It just works really well. The red one is okay, but, like, dealing one damage is whatever. But both modes of this card are quite decent. Wait, does this... How does this work with survival? Don't I get counters on my things? I think. Oh no, I forgot to add a counter, god damn it! Ah! That's, that's tilting. That's, that's really tilting. Uh Oh my gosh. Oh, that's so annoying. Fear of exposure. Manifest dread. All right, you know what? I'm tapping this now. Here and now. Oh my gosh. Okay. Oh, that's how you use it. Okay. Sure. I'm trying to not put a bunch of counters on fear of abduction just because it's already a pretty high priority target to remove. Oh, that was such a big mistake. Oh my gosh. I'm very uh, upset with myself on that one. Maybe I could have actually made the Shrewd Storyteller a 5-5. Five five. Just make that one harder to block. All right, rickety gazebo, go find us something good. Uh, sh sure. Can I get anything good back? Cartographer? That's not very good. Is there like a big... Is there like a big reach creature? Like, I'm afraid of these manifest cards. All right, flip them up. Oh, it's another fear of exposure, sure. And sure, okay. I mean, I'm happy trading the storyteller and then getting it back, so. I 
I'm. But actually, I, sh I can also blow up my twitching. Oh no, never mind. That thing has reach too, which is kind of annoying. So they're gonna kill my white room. I'm just blocking all the ground creatures, that's fine. Let's minimize the damage that we take. Conductive, conductive machete is a card. All right, this should, this should get it done. This should be good enough. I should have blown up that twitching doll like a turn earlier, but whatever. Okay. We went super wide and our big alien flyer got it done. I'm not a fan of that alien thing. That, that gives me the, the heebie-jeebies. I had lots of nightmares as a child with regards to aliens. All righty. What is Magic WC? I feel like these are people uh, qualified for the World Championship. So when I play against Magic WC, I think I'm playing against better, like, you know, the, the best of the best, basically. All right, here, we doesn't look like we have much to do early, and you are correct. But we do have Seas from Slumber that we can use to slow them down just a little bit. I don't really want to use it on that. But I will, if I have to. Okay, I won't. I won't now. I mean, that card is scary, I guess, right? If it survives. I just don't have a play. I guess I could have mulliganed. Sure. Shore up doesn't exist, right? Well, I'm glad it doesn't. <laughs> Alright, I'm gonna play Kona and I don't know, maybe I get lucky. I can go machete into coordinated clobbering into attack. But of course it just totally depends on what they play. I need to get some kind of add-on that like Gets rid of this alien thing. I mean, it's got to be some kind of fight or bite spell, maybe. I don't know. I mean, if they have a bite spell, then my Kona's dead. Under the skin. This card is awesome, by the way. I didn't realize you can play this on turn three and, like, manifest the land to the graveyard and get the land back. It's really good. Yeah, under the skin is... I should have been green, probably, in that sealed deck. It has Vigilance? Okay. Damn. They have two blue mana. I can't really attack. What does it say? Whenever you manifest dread, you get an extra card. Hmm. They have this. They can't manifest dread just yet. But the problem is if I coordinate a clobbering the analyst, then I take a bunch of damage. This way I can double block.
Golly! Sure. It's very all in here. I, I must admit what I'm doing here, but I just got to hope that they don't turn some, something face up. Okay, well, I'm just dead. I'm telling you, Meat Locker. Meat Locker is the best one of these at common. Meat Locker is very, very good. What a beating. What is our record now? Two and two? Okay. This might be a, this might be a five game draft just because I'm just really not happy with green white. Maybe I have to just like really curve out and I, I, I just, maybe green white is like the super aggro deck and I'm just doing too much like mid-rangey stuff, but. I'm going to keep this because I, I have a long neck that I can play on turn three and turn four because I can get a forest with the branch snapper. So hopefully eventually we just draw a white source and we'll be okay. I'm just going to branch snapper here. Like Manifest Red doesn't really help me find um, a land. So. With my hand, I'd rather just be able to make sure that I like play a land every turn, play something and, and kind of take it from there. What did they discard? Norin? Okay. Get a forest. Ooh, we drew a plains. I'm just gonna run out the plains. Bring it. Look, you better have a good blocker here or something. Well, they sure do. This seems okay. We get to hit them for five. They get to hit us for a lot too, but we, uh, with the fear of immobility, I'm liking being able to do this. What does this do? It's a one drop. Yeah, what does this do? As long as there's three more cards exiled. At the beginning of your, if it's tapped, exile up to one target creature. Okay, sure. They might have the destroy target attacking creature card. Sure. I gained some life. It's fine. Tap down the patch play thing. Beat down still. Trapped in the screen? Okay. Jump scare. What is this get back? Whenever you attack, put a plus, whenever, okay. Whatever. Um, let's play this. Let's play this. Okay. I mean, they have a nice, like, it's just like a mono white deck and it's just beating the, 
beating the crap out of me. The patch play thing is kind of annoying. That thing hits really hard. Probably need to have this long neck trade with something and then get it back next turn. No real great blocks here. Two on double strike. My my creatures are all like X2s. We need to find something good here. The verse oh my gosh. Menace too. Okay. That's a thing. It's all I got. It is all I possess. The thing is, because they have such an aggressive start, it makes it so hard for me to ever actually attack them. That, I, that it's just so it just I just have to keep playing defense, and then eventually they just draw like some combat trick to push through for damage, and then I'm just in a ton of trouble. All right. Did that exile too? Why does everything exile? Yep, that'll get it done. All right, that was a really, really impressive red-white aggro deck. That absolutely demolished our less than impressive green-white deck. And that is it. I just realized that I just can't keep playing after picking up my third loss. So sadly, this one was a bit of a fail. I will say just from seeing some of the cards, I mean, I played some pretty atrocious cards in my deck as well, but noting that the entire, like the whole survivor mechanic just seems to be a lot more difficult to pull off. I feel like in order to have a really good version of this deck, you're gonna need a really good curve backed up by really good removal or interaction. And you really want to go first. If you don't go first, and you can, then you can't attack. And then your entire, like, the survivor mechanic doesn't work at all. So all in all, I'm gonna just, again, first impressions. But it does not seem to me that green-white in particular is particularly good just because I don't like the way that the mechanic plays out. But perhaps there are more ways to tap creatures than I saw. I need to see them at, like, common. Are there commons that tap my own things? And I'm not talking about pay, playing a 5-mana 4-4 four four that taps my things. I need it to be kind of more incidental. Oh, clobbering time. That's why. Okay, see, I'm, I, the wheels are coming together, but a lot of them are uncommons. But anyways, uh, I think I'm going to have to explore green-white a little more. But right now, it doesn't seem like what I want to be doing. If I want to be aggro, it's like black-red, red-white. Those seem quite aggro. But I'm not entirely sure that green-white might have it. But who knows? We'll give it a shot uh, again, I'm sure, in the future. Anyways, two and three. Can't play any more matches. So we have another draft to do and probably another draft to do on top of that. But of course, the show must go on. Anyways, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button for more daily videos just like this. If you've enjoyed this content and wanted to support the channel in another way, the best way to do so is through my Patreon. That's patreon.com slash Paul Chion. Additionally, this video is brought to you by tcgplayer.com. Check out tcgplayer.com for all your Magic the Gathering singles and sealed product needs. You need to pick up some cards for your local FNM. You want to pick up some sealed product or some booster packs or what have you uh, to build your collection. Make sure you check out tcgplayer.com and click that affiliate link in the description below. Finally, check out heavyplay.com for premium Magic the Gathering supplies and accessories. If you want great deck boxes, play mats, sleeves, dice boxes, life pads, check them out. Heavyplay.com slash Paul Chion will get you 10% off your first order. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow.